All right, welcome everybody to our results explanation video. I am Ellie Owens, I'm the president of the company and we're also here with Natalie pierchuk Bino, our vice president of exploration. And we're here to explain these results to you that we just released today, which after, um, after a couple months, we're very excited to, to see these results come in. So just a brief background on what they are, what the purpose of this drilling program was. We have the McKinnon resource here. This is a side view of that McKinnon resource, a slice through the earth. And what we're seeing is the Falcon Bridge drilling of the 1980s. That's these black holes here. And the purple is the outline of what we knew of the McKinnon resource before this drilling program. And what we were trying to do with this 10,000 meter drilling program, step out drilling program, was to identify the lower limits or a new lower limit of the resource. Because if we were to just go in and do a lot of fill and drilling, um, we might not know how much bigger this resource can get. So we wanted to know how much bigger can this get before we do any infill drilling to update the resource. And so what we did was we did a series of step outs, some shallow, which were at 50 meters below the resource, and some that were closer to 150, 200, 250 meters below the resource itself. So quite a significant step out. So now we're going to go through the actual results. We were very successful at this. We did find a lower limit of this resource. It is open below that limit that we even found. And we hit some continuous grade at depth and we hit some high grades. So Natalie's going to go into the details of that a little bit more here. So again, we're looking at a slice through the earth, a side view of the resource. This gray outline here, this dash outline, is, this, is the same as this purple outline. So that is the limit of what we knew from the Falcon Bridge drilling. Now, each of these dots here are the pierce points of our drill holes of where, they, where the drill hole intersected the resource at grades above one gram per ton. So this doesn't include anything below one gram per ton. All of these orange dots are above one gram per ton. All of these red dots are above five grams per ton. And all of these magenta are above 10 grams per ton. So all of this is on the relatively high end for gold grade. All right, so Natalie, what are we looking at here from the results of this of this drilling program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all of the uh, intersections, as Ellie has mentioned, are from our goal from the goal holes as well as the um, phase one and phase two drilling. And what we can see is we've drawn the yellow line there to show the delineation of the McKinnon footprint at depth when we've hit a greater than one gram per ton gold. So this is really positive because as you can see, we can see that the footprint extends not only at depth, but appears to be relatively continuous across the length of McKinnon. So this gives us a really good sense that um, we have a lot of area and data to work with in order to expand this resource. Um, what's not shown on here is that we do have um, anomalous gold around these one, these higher grade and lower grade um, gold values that are between 0.1 gram per ton and one gram per ton. So this is very um, important when it comes to understanding the grade distribution and what's going on on the McKinnon zone on a larger scale. And just as a clarification point, each of these pierce points here are pierce points of where, our, where we intersected grade with the resource, which means that there could be multiple of them per each drill hole. So not all of these are individual drill holes. And also just to elaborate on this line here, this is the lower limit of our knowledge of the McKinnon resource. It is not the lower limit of the resource. This is simply where we have drilled down to an intersected grade, but it is open below this orange line. So we can see that with our grades that we have presented here, we have clustering of our mid to higher grades in three areas of the resource. And those clusters suggest that there might be a geological control or a structural control um, to these higher grades. So now it's really important for us to take this data and put it into a working model to see if we can vector or chase some of these higher grade gold values. Um, so I want to talk a bit more about these halos and what they mean for the broader system. But before we do, I want to emphasize the distance between these holes that we drilled 300 meters apart. These are very much exploratory holes. And what does that mean? 300 meters is the same as three football fields. Mineable vein widths are closer to two to three meters. So we're looking for something that's the width of a table in three football fields with a drill core that's about five centimeters wide. And so hitting grades that are, you know, 15 grams per ton over a meter is still very good at this, at this early stage of exploration under the McKinnon zone. So now let's talk about these halo zones and what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. 
So here is, um, it's another cross section view, but what we've done is we've flipped the view so that we're looking along the length of the McKinnon zone and north is now to the right side. And what we can see is we've done um, a dashed line to represent this halo, and this is this anomalous gold of 0.1 gram per ton or higher. Um, and that halo and that gold mineralization is concentrated at the amphibolite and tonalite contact. So our amphibolite is the green and our tonalite is the pink. And what's really important to know about this is that while we're drilling, we can see that when we are within that anomalous halo above 0.1, uh, we know that we are within that area where we could find our dismembered quartz veins. So it really is good at demarcating that zone uh, to understand where we should put our next drill holes. So how do halos get there? These aren't just halos that are alteration zones. These are gold bearing halos. Can you explain the relation to veins? That's right. So what we have is um, we have a large scale uh, fluid system that's coming up uh, along a structure, which is our amphibolite and tonalite contact. And that fluid system is bringing up our quartz veins. And that halo suggests that we have a fluid pathway and a heat pathway that is bringing up our gold mineralization. So understanding that we have a halo, we know that we should be within the vicinity of quartz veins. Uh, the size of the quartz veins we can't figure out. It could be centimeters, two meters thick, but we know that we're within that vicinity where we should find uh, gold bearing quartz veins. And those gold bearing quartz veins are important because they are the highest grades that we see. But the halos tell us we're in a broad system of fluid flow that is carrying gold. That's right. right. And we've seen, we've always seen that our highest grades are within those dismembered quartz veins that carry the pyrite. And we can see the pictures there on the left that show what those quartz, um, those quartz veins look like in outcrop. And you can see the centimeter scale as it's cross cutting um, the myelinitic fabric and also in drill core. And then can you tell us what these results are going to mean for us going forward with exploration both on and off McKinnon? So what we are going to be doing with this data is we're going to be taking the gold grade, we're going to be looking at the distribution, and we have developed a basic structural and um, geological model now to work with and put the, that um, gold grade into uh, to understand why we have the distribution and what's controlling it. We're going to take that working model and we're going to overlay it with our other data that we've collected, uh, such as IP, mag data, um, our geochemistry, um, any kind of surface mapping. And we're going to use that to help develop more targets within the McKinnon and around also a long strike. And we can take this model and apply it to other areas of the McKinnon to help us with our exploration program. Okay, great, thanks, Natalie. So to summarize, we have increased this footprint of this resource. We've hit continuous gold grade. We've hit some high grades and we're starting to see a system that we're putting into context of a structural model, which will help us expand below a long strike and off of McKinnon into this gold system that we're seeing, especially in the central part of the Hawkins project. Now stay tuned everyone. We have a very robust surface exploration program coming forward for the next couple of months, which we are going to be telling you about over the next couple of weeks. Um, and so feel free to reach out to us anytime if you have any questions or want to get more information on the activities that we're doing. We're happy to talk to anyone anytime. Thanks very much.